But why does God have to send himself down to be killed to save? So why? So I said this earlier. To who? Why can't he, if, if he wants you to save yourself, what? Why can't he decree upon you more prayers, more fasting, more prayers? I don't know what you mean, decree hardships, more prayers. So you can prove yourself to him. What's, what has it got to do with the fact that no matter how many good deeds you do, you still sin, right? You still disobey and break his law, correct? It's like going to a judge and saying, hey, judge, look, I've done all these good deeds, but let me off for you know breaking the speed limit or for robbing that person's house. It doesn't matter how much good deeds you did. You still did a crime. You have a debt. You must pay it. So I don't understand your logic. Where's the logic? Well, the logic is is that the the idea is that the good deeds are going to outweigh the bad, or so, you're going to do more good deeds than you do bad, or you should strive to do more good than bad. And how does that undo the that's kind of bad you've done? Okay, let's go with this. Okay, I've actually fed more people than houses that I've robbed. I've only robbed ten houses, but I fed a thousand people. How does me feeding a thousand people undo? the damage of breaking into people's homes and robbing their merchandise. How does that undo that? How does one undo the other? So I've carjacked. Well, I've if, only... you, if you have stopped it, you have done it and you have okay. stopped. And then okay, I stopped it. Okay. Oh, well, let me go with you. Okay, I already broke into 10 homes and I stole 20 cars and I stopped. But I still broke into 20, 10 homes and stole 20 cars. I already did the damage. I already did the crime. Now... Who pays for that? I stopped, but I still did it. Who pays for that? It's already been done. Okay, Your Honor, I stopped. I don't break into homes anymore, even though I broke into 10 homes. I don't steal cars anymore, even though I've already stolen 20 cars. That's my past. But hold on, sir. But everybody's going to stand. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. 100%. So there's still a debt that needs to be paid. So the Lord Jesus, in his mercy, paid that debt. So now you can be forgiven. But the Jews don't believe that. Which Jews? You mean the thousands of Jews that are Christians, like Michael Brown, that do believe that? Which Jews are you talking about? You keep thinking all Jews believe the same thing. It's like saying all the Muslims believe in Bukhari. Do all Muslims? No. You have Shia, you have Quran-only Muslims, you have Alawi. I mean, which Jews? What are you talking about? Main, mainstream Jews. The mainstream Jews that don't believe in Jesus, that don't believe he's the Messiah, don't believe he's born of the Virgin, that he's a false Messiah, a curse by God. So let's go follow them. Let's reject Christianity and Islam. No, I didn't say, but I mean, they, they get into heaven according to them by deeds. And you get into heaven according to you by deeds, right? But you're both wrong, aren't you? So who Why cares what they both think? Be wrong, and you are right. If you have two out of three that are consistent with each other. Why can't you reevaluate what you because believe when I go say, to, hey, when I go to the Tanakh, ideology is not consistent with the two other Abrahamic faiths. Why? Because when I go, well, I'm answering you. Heaven. So you're asking, but you're not letting me answer. Because when I go to their Tanakh Hebrew Bible, I see they're wrong. Because I asked the Jew, if it's your good deeds that brings you into right relationship, then why in the world did you have a temple, a sacrificial system, and priests that had to offer sacrifices daily and once a year for all your sins to be forgiven so you wouldn't come under God's wrath. Can you explain Leviticus 16 for me? Yam Kippur. Yam Kippurum, the day of atonement. Can you explain Leviticus 17, 10 to 14 for me? Without the remission of sins, there is no forgiveness where it says that the blood makes atonement by virtue of, the, of its life. So well, they slaughtered the animals, didn't they? Why? If only my good deeds are all I need to be in right relation with God, why then waste all these animals and shed all the blood of millions of animals? If you count from the time of Moses to Jesus, God knows how many thousands, if not millions of animals' blood was shed. It was a bloody mess in the temple. Oh, yeah, yeah, God yeah, Sam, let me, let me explain. Sam, Sam uh, where are you from? I'm a Syrian, Ashuri, from Kuwait. Born in Kuwait, but my parents are from Iraq. What about it? We're changing subjects okay, so now. What about Ashuri, not Arab, man. Assyrian, we're before you. We're your daddies. Anyway. Okay. I'm just asking you. Yeah. Uh, so what the Jews did, they gave atonement. Are you with me so yeah, far? Yeah, why? Why? So not only is it good deeds, but you see, those animals, they were they were assets to the Jews. Because why? they? Why you know, shed they their blood? Them. They, you're not answering questions yet. Why shed because their blood? Because they are giving up something of value to them. So because those animals are a source of their livelihood. Okay. So why do I need to give up a life of an animal? Is that what it said, or it said no? The animal dies in your place because the blood makes atonement. 
because the animal's dying so that you can be spared. That's what Leviticus 17 and 11 says. Why are you reinterpreting what Leviticus 17 and 11 says? You're telling me one thing and their book tells me another thing. Leviticus 17 and 11, it says that the life is in the blood and I've given you the blood to make atonement for life. It's the blood that makes atonement for the life, the soul. It's not you're giving up something of monetary value. No, you're giving up an animal who has to die in your place so that you don't die, even though you deserve to. So the animal dies in your place so you can be spared from death. That's what it says. Leviticus 17, 11. So Jesus practiced this. No, Jesus is telling you so Jesus those practiced animal this. practices were pointing to me. Why do you think God told them to sacrifice animals? Because that's a picture of me, the Lamb of God, because I will do once and for all what all those animals could not do for you. But they were pointing to me. But how does that make sense to you? How Very easy to make sense? sense. The Bible talks about sin, the word sin. I and, thought it was about giving up something of value. To no, that's not what Leviticus 17 Allah. says. Leviticus 16 and 17 didn't say that, but well, it's, it's okay. about how you interpret it. Okay, okay, let's try this again. Interpret for me. I'm going to read it for you. Now, I want to see how many ways you're going to spin Leviticus 17 11. Let me read it for you. For the life of the flesh, the soul, the nafs of the flesh is in the blood. And I've given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. The blood. Yes. When you kill an animal, you shed its blood. And the blood is brought before the altar as a sign. An animal has died in order to make atonement for this human soul. It doesn't, have, it doesn't have nothing to do with giving something up. Yeah, you're giving up the life of an animal to spare your life. The life of an animal for my life or I have to die. That's the principle. So why is God going to accept an animal instead of you? Because do you, you want, want to, to die? Know. Okay, you can die and go to hell because God is showing you mercy. If I demand you die, you go to hell. But in my mercy, I'll let someone die in your place so I can spare you. So, okay, sure. Tell God, hey, God. To forget the animal, take me. All right, then, Yusuf, I'll take you right straight to hell. All right, good deal. Sin is breaking God's command. When you break God's command, it says, you shall die. The soul that sin shall die. So if I break his command, my punishment is death. So what's the payment for sin? Death. What's the debt? Death. So God says, either you pay that debt and you die, or someone can pay the debt for you. So what Jesus did is he said, I will pay the debt of your sin. I will take your place in death so you can be spared because now your debt is paid. That's the logic.